Japan, it's a country. Japanese culture has been all the rage in the 21st century. From Europe to the States, Africa to Australia, everyone is talking about the latest seasonal rom-com or studying the blade. This fascination makes sense. Japan is a beautiful nation with a culture as unique as it is interesting. However, there is one component of Japanese culture few here in the West pursue, the language. The history of Japanese is largely a consequence of geography. The earliest form of the language dates back to around 2,500 years ago, when it was first brought to the archipelago. Once it hit the islands, it quickly spread and replaced the indigenous languages. Well, most of them. Because Japan is a relatively isolated archipelago, the spoken word of Japanese had plenty of time to develop on its own and become the… interesting… tongue it now is. While all this was going on, their next door neighbor, China, was working on this really cool thing called writing. Turns out having a record of your language is really useful, and the Chinese began utilizing and exporting their written language throughout East Asia. Once a proper understanding of written Chinese had reached Japan, the Japanese took extremely well to it, and these characters would eventually form the backbone of Japanese, kanji. Eventually, the Japanese grew tired of writing only in Chinese and instead rearranged the characters to conform to Japanese grammar and pronunciation around the 7th century. This writing system, kanbun, was the first written form of Japanese, and pivotal works of ancient Japanese literature were penned in this manner. Kanbun was imperfect, however, in that the characters used were originally built for writing Chinese, not the radically different Japanese. To better write their language, the Japanese began using Chinese characters solely for their sound, a system called manyogana. Manyogana kind of made things worse, in that you now have no clue whether a character is being used for its logographic meaning or phonetic pronunciation, and the phonetic characters were nowhere near standardized. To finally address this issue in writing Japanese, two separate systems were developed around the 9th century. The first system, katakana, was a derivative of manyogana developed by monks. Monks were tasked with writing history and copying texts, and manyogana was often overly complex and slow to write as a phonetic alphabet. In order to speed up their record keeping, the monks took small parts of specific manyogana as a shorthand to serve as a simplified phonetic alphabet. The second system, hiragana, was developed by women in the Japanese capital. Confucianism was a major component in Japan during this time, and this philosophy didn't regard women very well. Women may not have received proper education in kanji, but the girl bosses of ancient Japan learned to read and write either way. This was in the form of cursive manyogana resulting in phonetic characters with a simpler, flowing look to them. The two kanas were gradually incorporated into the overall writing system of Japanese, filling in the gaps left by kanji and making the written language better correspond to the spoken. The development of kanji, hiragana, and katakana were the basis of Japanese from the Heian period to today, but the language manifested itself in many different forms over the centuries. Japanese had different dialects across the archipelago, to the point that people on either end could barely understand each other. Similarly, numerous variants of written Japanese existed as well, and they were just as incomprehensible as the spoken language. Communication across the island was difficult, to say the least. However, this would be addressed during the reign of Emperor Meiji. The Meiji Restoration was a massive overhaul of Japanese society and culture, and language reform was a major component of that. Numerous proposals were made on how to update and modernize Japanese across the island, ranging from getting rid of kanji, writing everything in Latin script, or just having English be the official language. These more radical proposals didn't pan out, as you can probably tell, and instead a written form of colloquial Japanese was promoted as the universal standard, except in government documents for whatever reason. The Meiji language reform set the groundwork for modern Japanese, which would see some minor modification during the post-war period. The occupying allied forces wanted to continue the prior language reforms, and while they had many of the same radical suggestions as the Meiji era, cooler heads once again prevailed. The number of kanji needed to properly read and write Japanese was trimmed down, kana usage was updated to conform to modern pronunciations, and any sort of kanbun writing was no longer utilized. Outside of minor updates, this has been the Japanese spoken and written since the 1950s. Compared to its… unique roots, Japanese is now a largely coherent language as beautiful as it is complex. And it's pretty complex. Learning Japanese is a colossal undertaking. 
The Foreign Service Institute here in the States provides training for various languages, along with numbers regarding the effort needed to actually learn a language. Japanese is the single hardest language taught by the FSI, taking no less than a year and a half of constant study and teaching to have even a passing understanding. Perhaps the biggest hurdle in learning Japanese is its very basis, kanji. Kanji corresponds to both the written and spoken word, and is a difficulty even for native speakers. The most obvious challenge is the general complexity of the characters themselves. Sure, some look simple or map pretty well to their meaning, but then you get characters like this, and this, and this, and literally thousands of other highly intricate characters. In addition, while pretty much all kanji have a singular meaning, they often have multiple pronunciations, an artifact of their Chinese origins. Kanji readings can be broken down into Japanese-derived and Chinese-derived pronunciations, and most characters have a number of both. The specific pronunciation to be used is very context-dependent, and while you can typically suss it out after some familiarization, it doesn't make this quirk of the language any less daunting. In terms of sheer numbers, knowledge of around 2,000 kanji is necessary to have a sufficient understanding of Japanese, as per Japan's education system. Sure, you won't have to know hyper-specific kanji used in, like, two words, but it's still a huge number and is the biggest filter for those trying to learn the language. Kanji is a definite challenge, but so is properly arranging them in a sentence. Compared to English, Japanese grammar has a number of quirks, with the first difference being word order. In English, your usual sentence is built in a subject-verb-object word order. With Japanese, the verb and object are swapped. While this may seem to be a minor tweak, a completely different basis for your grammar structure isn't easy to learn and fully utilize. Another unique difficulty in Japanese is regarding particles. Particles, for all you non-linguists out there, are any words or terms outside of the subject-verb-object trichotomy. Japanese particles are… awful, as they can have multiple disparate meanings, distinguishable only by the context they are used in. Japanese also makes very liberal usage of particles, placing them literally everywhere in a sentence. You got particles for objects, particles for possession, particles for questions, particles for particles, particles with irregular pronunciations. It's very densely packed, and very confusing at best. A theme you may have noticed is that context is king in Japanese. Context doesn't just determine the meaning of a particle or the reading of certain kanji, but the very way Japanese is spoken. Formality and formal language are present in any language, but Japanese takes it a step further. For starters, the root form of Japanese is practically never used, with polite language being the common form of Japanese written and spoken. Polite language is then built upon for even more polite versions when addressing superiors, respectful language when referring to said superiors, and humble language when referring to oneself. It's basically customer service or corporate speak, but deeply ingrained in the language and culture. In short, Japanese is as much about memorizing kanji as it is understanding the culture. Finally, perhaps the hardest part about learning Japanese is the simple fact it's a foreign language. It takes an insane amount of dedication and discipline for the constant study necessary to attain any level of fluency, dedication few possess. In addition, there are just biological handicaps towards picking up a new language after childhood. Kids absorb knowledge like sponges, making the process of learning a language in youth relatively easy. This ability to pick up and learn novel information attenuates as you grow older, however meaning it's just objectively harder to learn a language the older you are. As difficult as Japanese may appear, it's 100% possible to learn. We may have discussed the difficulties of the language compared to English, but it does have a few straightforward components like very consistent pronunciation rules, few gendered words, and no sort of pluralization. In addition, immigrants to Japan and dedicated enthusiasts study, learn, and gain fluency in the language daily meaning the support structure for those learning Japanese is extremely robust. Finally, Japanese can be a really fun language to learn. Ancient and beautiful, to learn Japanese is to learn about the history and culture surrounding it. Given the broad appeal and intrigue of Japanese culture, why not learn the most integral part of it? It's better than obsessing over… certain parts of it. Like, comment, and subscribe. Obligatory shilling. Anyways. This vid took longer than anticipated to come out. I actually fell sick near the end of February, rendering my beautiful voice largely unusable, and I can't really work on these videos without voiceover. Also, I didn't want to record audio when I was hacking up along every other sentence. Wanted to thank Kalani for the Reddit post which really blew up my most recent vid. Definitely put some gas in the tank of this channel, and for that I'm really thankful for. 
Also thanks to Mari for input on the script, as she herself is from Japan and is more knowledgeable on this subject than I. Definitely check both of them out. With that, thanks again for watching.